Again, it's a privilege to be in your midst. God is moving by His Spirit, His wonders to perform. God has been really meeting the needs of the people this week. Though I have been busy, I was seeking the mind of the Lord for what I should share tonight. And of course, we always like to pick out the best, don't we? <laughs> Which would uh, be satisfying to every one of our appetites so that we could feel real good. <coughs> Amen? Amen? You hear me, don't you? <laughs> so, uh, as I kept seeking the Lord, I was impressed with two words. But I sort of with reservation held those words in the back of my mind and said, I don't see how it could possibly fit tonight. And the Lord is so unique, so beautiful, that he knows what he's doing. Amen. Amen. And when you and I learn to flow in the spirit of God, we will see tremendous things. But so many times we make up our heart, make up our mind, and say, now God, you've got to come my way. Amen. Now, you sang some beautiful choruses tonight. Honey, did you hear me? <laughs> Amen? Amen. And that brother brought out something that was a confirmation where the word of the king is, there's power. Oh. Amen? Amen. Yes. And Brother Snowman brought out that beautiful song. Amen. And that means something. You hear me? Amen. It means something. And the two words that I desire to share with you tonight is in Christ. Amen. All right? I could spend weeks on this. I've been teaching this at my prayer group. God's been dealing with me very, very tremendously in the authority of the believer, in our prayer life. Why aren't our prayers answered all the time? Why are we in and out and up and down? So God began to, I'll say deal. I won't say minister. I'd rather be dealt with by God and have an experience than I can minister. Amen? If it has not been dug out of the heart of my life, I cannot minister. I refuse to minister unless I've had the experience. So, in Christ, I don't know if I'll fly through it, walk through it, or what. But I will not try and give you too much. I said try. Romans 3, 24. I desire to say this, people. I know the power that's in his name. I know the authority that's in his name. I know the position to be in his name. I know what it means to walk in his name. For where the word of the king is, Beloved, there's power and authority. And if we're in Jesus, we're in the king. We're not approaching the kingdom or approaching the king. The Lord has extended the scepter to our hands. And saints of God, it's up to you and I to touch that scepter. Because that represents authority and power. Amen. And when those sword tips was touched together, Ooh. that meant something. Jesus. And we talked about it. We ministered about it. We walked around in the realm of it. But beloved, let's possess it. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Yes. Devils are subjected to the power of that name. Sickness is subjected to the power of that name. Are you with me? Yes. The gates of hell shake be 
because of that name. And the trouble saints, we've been shaking up kingdoms on our own. But when we move in that name, it says kings and kingdoms shall pass away. Legions are subjected to that name. I want to have that potential power that's invested in that name. Our countenance must change our attitudes, our feelings, our expressions. Because if I'm in Christ, I'm going to show him, honey, and not myself. Go on. Go on. And so many times we move in ourselves and call it divine. What has been ourselves? But when we move in the power and the demonstration of that name, there's no devil in hell can withstand that name. But we live in fear, constant fear of tomorrow. The anxieties of today and the hell of the past is the way most of us live. Well, I want to live moment by moment in his presence. Yes. It's a position. I've heard and seen a lot of people use that name and say it and imitate it. Amen? But there's commanding authority in that name. Hallelujah. When you once get that key into that lock, honey, you better hang on because you'll never handle it all when you open up the door. <laughs> and if ever the body of Christ in this end time ministry needs an, in, an infilling of a traumatic move of God, it's now. The revival of witchcraft and Satanism and Buddhism and Confucius and all of these is prevalent throughout the land. But you said, I want to lift it high so that the whole world may know that I'm one of them. And not fear and trembling, but when I say, thank God, I believe in that name. And I'm not preaching the doctrine tonight, neighbor. Because doctrines will never shake a devil. But that name can destroy his power. Glory. Amen. And some good news, folks. I'm going back to Haiti. In a few more weeks, back amongst the witch doctors and the voodoo priests. Walk the mountains of Haiti and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. To find the voodoo priests, the witch doctors, challenge them and show to the villagers that the God I serve is alive. I'm not ashamed. I'm not afraid of Jesus. And I'm not afraid of the devil either, neighbor. Because the God that I serve has all power. And all I have to is reach out for it. Oh, not only, but I've got to claim it, walk in it, and let it simulate through my being. It become a part of my very tissue and sinew of my bones. Amen? Amen. We've done a lot of preaching and a lot of teaching, honey, but we've got to start living it before the world. I let them see it works. Neighbor, it either is or it isn't. It either does or it doesn't. Devils aren't afraid of noise. They can make pretty good noise, neighbor, can't they? Oh, they're not afraid of noise. They're not afraid if you wave the Bible around in their face either. They won't shake them. But when that name begins to have that certain melodious tune that comes from the very corridors of heaven and begins to flow through the universe, it can bring a division and a separation that even the devils must submit because they know there's something in that name. So in Christ, 
How'd you like that for an introduction? Not bad. <laughs> You're laughing now, but you heard what I said, didn't yes. you? Yes. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. The Lord once in a while gets in and scrapes up a little bit of dandruff, doesn't he? <laughs> Romans 3.24. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption, that is what? Oh. You hear me? So I'm only freely justified by grace through the blood in Christ. Amen? Amen. No, we all believe in his name. We all quote unquote, amen. But it doesn't always work for us though, does it? It should. It should. <coughs> Why are we in and out, up and down? Saved one day, lost the next day. Happy one day, sad the next day. Depressed one day and on top of the mountain. Like that old song, I'm sitting on top of the world. You wake up tomorrow morning, the world's sitting on top of you. <laughs> and then we go out in the street corner and we look at that poor degenerate man and say, brother, wouldn't you like to know Jesus? He looks at you, he says, honey, I've got no troubles, I don't need yours. <laughs> and I thought when I walked with God, I was supposed to be happy and joyful and have an effervescent experience that the people say, I don't know what you got, neighbor, but I want it. Yes. And those heathen black people on the mountains of Haiti, they don't know anything but the fear and the dread and the cults and the fears and the curses and spells of these witch doctors and voodoo priests. They don't know any better. But I'll tell you folks, I can walk those mountains with joy in my heart and a shout on my lips and bring forth the deliverance power of God, not to one or two, to hundreds and thousands of people. Villages transformed by the creative word of God. As a matter of fact, I'd rather be in Haiti than America anyway. Because the people are more receptive, more responsive, because they want it. All right? Now, Romans 8, 1, you all know this by heart. That's the trouble. You know it, but it's not simulated in your very being. That's the trouble. We're so religious. We know so much of the Bible. We know so much theology, but it's never become practical experience in our lives. Because there's a lot of people that's living under condemnation. Now, if you are tonight, you are not in Christ. I'm sorry, neighbor. The word says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are what? Amen. And how many people have I had to pray because they're under condemnation? Jesus Christ convicts, the devil condemns. Amen. 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 And if you're under condemnation, neighbor, you're not in Christ. The word says so. Do you believe the word? Where the word of the king is, you sign is power. I mean, say, is power. Now, come on. Let's see exactly where we are tonight. When I get done, hey, you all know where you are. You all going to know where you live. And it's not going to be, you know, way up on top of Mount Everest. We get together. We can sing. We can shout. We can dance. We can do a lot of things. But neighbor, when you're home and you're all by yourself, I'll tell you, we become different personalities, don't we? And if it can work behind the pulpit, it must work in the dean's office, out on the sidewalk, or in the street, or in the store. God is not confined to a person, place, or thing. I'm the one that keeps him confined. I'm the one that brings him into bondage. There is now, therefore, no condemnation.
condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. All right? You go along with me so far? All right? Now verse number two. For the law of the spirit of life, where? So the spirit of life will not function in me if I'm not in Christ. And neighbor, I was taught that when I got saved, I was in Christ. Anybody dare say amen? amen. Come on. Amen. Oh, I'll tell you. Amen. You're not fooling me. <laughs> <laughs> amen. But I'll tell you, in a couple of days after you walked out, you found out who you was in. Amen. Amen. And that's why we have the hassles. That's why we have the problems. That's why we have the difficulties. Because we have not reached a place of total commitment and surrender and dedication to give our all into Christ. And when you served the devil, you gave him every inch and every mile. And you never questioned whether it was right or wrong. But when God began to walk in your heart and your life, you don't know whether you're in or out. Okay? So the spirit of life will never function outside of Christ. Now if I'm in Christ, it says that he has made me free. And I'm only free, honey, when I'm in Christ. <laughs> Come on now. That's the only time you feel good. That's the only time you're really happy when you're in Christ. But when you're in yourself, you're miserable and you make everybody else miserable. And I'm not serving a miserable Christ. I'm serving a joyous, happy Christ that'll give me more than I ever could ask or think. They could shake the very powers of hell, open up the windows of heaven, and say, son, it's yours. He said so in his word. Oh, yeah. yes, he did. He said, anything that I touch and claim, he said, he'd do it for me, neighbor. Didn't he? Come on. That's what the good book says, honey. And where the word of the king is, there's power. I want that power. We're just like a lot of these souped up cars. Popping and banging and snorting and blowing. That's right. Go ahead and laugh, neighbor. That's all we are. But I'll tell you, neighbor, when that Christmas tree turns green, it's going to take more than a beep beep and a pop pop to go down that quarter mile track. And I'll tell you folks, we've been playing church, we've been cat and mouse in the devil, amen, and we've been making a lot of noise, but God says he's turning the light green and he expects us to have the authority and the power over every devil in hell. That's what the word says. He said it to me anyhow. I don't know about you. <laughs> you know why? I've had it work. I've had it work. So I know what it'll do. I know what it'll do. It has transformed lives here this week, right in this very place. Lives have been transformed because I don't say this power in a name. It's demonstrated and manifested. And that's what I want. I want a manifested life in Christ. Okay? You're okay. Now, Romans 12, 5. Romans 12, 5. So we, being many, are what? We are many. Right? We got many personalities. Many characters, many ups and downs, in and outs, many likes and dislikes. But the word of the Lord says, one body in Christ. Yeah. Now, Lord, I don't know how you're going to do it. But he's doing it in spite of us. Yes. 
And if I won't flow into the flowing of God and allow the dealings of God in my life to bring me into that position, I will become a reject. Anybody want to say amen? Amen. I'm either going to be rejected or accepted. Amen. Amen. I'll be either accepted of the Father or rejected. And neighbor, I want to be in it. I want to be where the action is, neighbor. Glory. And if there isn't any around here, neighbor, I'll find it. We're not the young generation of the Pepsi generation. We're of his generation. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. And now people moving now in the power and demonstration of the Holy Spirit. He's a now God. I want to move now. I want to feel now. I want to be touched now. I want to be convicted now. I want to be set free now. Not tomorrow. I can live in hope and die in despair. A lot of people hoping, 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 hoping. I don't want to hope. It's a now God. Faith can turn my hopes into reality. Amen? Okay. 1 Corinthians 1, 2. Until the church of God, which is at Corinth, to them that are what? <coughs> what? Sanctified where? Oh, isn't that beautiful? Some denomination says I have to be sanctified by them. <coughs> Anybody hear me? I have to be sanctified by them. I'll only be sanctified in Christ, neighbor. Your rules and regulations will never sanctify you. Your customs and your rituals will never sanctify me. The dealings of Christ in my heart will cause me to be stripped and laid bare before God. And then the work of sanctification begins to come forth. And then God will begin to separate the good from the bad, the righteous from the unrighteous, and bring a purging process so that the time will come when I'll reach that ultimate place of being fully sanctified. In Christ. Oh, Rules and regulations will never sanctify anybody. Amen. And there's some students right here. You hate the rules and regulations. If you was in the right place, you'd hate nothing. You'd submit. Come on, faculty, can't you say amen? amen. <laughs> <laughs> Amen, faculty. I've only been here since Monday. And I'll tell you, all the stirrings of tension. Because you don't want to submit. Neighbor, if you can't submit to a few rules and regulations, how can you submit to the authority of God? Yes. If you refuse to be disciplined by the faculty and the staff at this place, how in God's name can you learn the total discipline of the authority and the power of God? Amen. Amen. And you get in the right attitude, you'll fight nothing. And if you're in Christ, the minute you said yes to God and accepted Christ, you had no longer had anything else to say. Isn't that awful? <laughs> huh? We always got to manage to put our two cents worth in, one way or the other. And we've messed up God's plan. But if we could just say that totally, yes, God. I'll tell you, folks, we'll come out on the winning side. Not, not reaching that winning side, but part and parcel of the winning side. So I'm only going to be sanctified in Christ, not by teaching, not by theology, not by rules and regulations and denominations. I'll be sanctified in Christ. And we've got too many people going around stripping each other, destroying one another with this and that. And all they're doing is hurting and destroying the body of Jesus Christ. You leave them alone and let God do the
the clergy and they do the stripping and they shall do the blessing. Amen? Amen. First Corinthians 1 Corinthians 1.30 But of him ye are what? If it wasn't for Jesus, we wouldn't be in Christ tonight. You realize that? If it wasn't for him, we wouldn't be in Christ. Can anybody say amen tonight? Amen. Amen. All right. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us what? Wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. And that only takes place. And they've all been previously covered by the preceding verses. They are only culminated when I am in and how many of us have tried to work out our redemption? How many times do we try to work out our salvation? We've even tried to work out the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We've even tried to work out the dance. And we swing and sway like Sammy Kane. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to tell you, neighbor, can I be honest tonight? You want me to be honest? Yes. And I'd like to share what I have seen. But then we'd have a committee that would tire and feather me. <laughs> There's a lot of things that we do that does not please God, but it satisfies this flesh. Amen. Amen. And maybe someday I'll really get nitty gritty. Because God is looking for holy people. You can deceive people. You may deceive the faculty. You may deceive the staff. You may deceive me once in a while. But I've got news for you. There's somebody that you never deceive. And that's God. Amen. Amen. So you can sing and shout and dance and do all you want to. But I'll tell you, when that bloodhound of God is turned loose, you better watch out. He's going to get you. <laughs> and God's out to get people to live right. Hey, you don't shake me. You either want it or you don't. It's that simple neighbor. I used to weep and cry and, and go all through all kinds of things to help people. And I suffered the loss. I don't do it anymore. I run no more. No more will I run unless he tells me. If that phone rings, I don't care how dire the need is. I used to go. Go, some of you know it, go, night and day, 24 hours of the day, run down the highways, run out into the rivers, do all of this thing. And all I did was get all messed up. So I'm all done running, neighbor. And I haven't suffered, I've gained. You know, I'm thick. Maybe none of you are. All right? <laughs> What are you laughing for? <laughs> okay, 1 Corinthians 15, 22. <clears throat> for as in Adam all die, even so what? In Christ shall all be made alive. And neighbor, if we are in Christ, we'll be ministering life. We'll be imparting life. We'll be imparting strength. We'll be imparting encouragement. But when you see people, oh, Father, please, oh, if you only knew. The, the despairing looks. To shadows of darkness, 
the rejection, the remorse, the loneliness, the fears. Am I in Christ? See, no way, man. Come on, faculty, you with me? Amen? If I'm in Christ, I am to minister life. He came to give life and life more abundantly. And neighbor, when the world begins to see the life of Christ, you won't have to pull them to the altar. You won't have to beg them to come. None of that, neighbor. They'll come because the life and love of Jesus Christ will draw them in. Yes. Amen. Amen. But we've got our programs, our systems, our society. We've got all kinds of things to get the people in. When you start to let the life of Christ radiate through you, and that'll draw them in. Glory. Amen? Okay, 2 Corinthians 1, 21. <laughs> now he which establishes us with you, where? And what? Yes, and hath anointed us. Who? Is God. Amen? Hey, can you hear that for us? Do you know what God's saying? If you want God to anoint you, you've got to be in Christ. Oh, we go along, we sprinkle a little bit of honey and spice and everything nice, and we call that the anointing. We get goosebumps and... Hair rises on the back of our necks. And we feel kind of funny like. And, and uh, uh, amen? I thought by that scripture, God anoints us when we're in Christ. And when God's anointing begins to move to the body of Christ, I'll tell you, it's something you won't forget for a long, long time. Amen? And it'll leave an impression upon your heart and in your life. And it'll also impart a growth within your very being. I want that kind of anointing. I don't want to have to sing a certain song to get anointed. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, I could do it just like the rest of you. I don't want that. I want an anointing that can come directly from the sovereignty oh, oh, of the yes. very throne room of God and come through every battleground, through every cloud of darkness, and through every bit of despair, despondency, and rejection, and begin to set a fire burning in my soul. That's the kind of anointing I want. That'll keep me. Amen. Because this will be gone when you get home. <laughs> Can you hear me tonight? Yes, amen. Hallelujah. That's what I want, that kind of anointing. Yes. And you know, so I want to tell you, can I just chuck this in? I'm going to anyhow. I want to tell you something. The high priest anointed the priest. Amen? You hear me? But you know who anointed the high priest? God did. Come on. God anointed the high priest. God clothed the high priest. The priest couldn't do it. God did. And you see the parallel with this verse? God does the anointing when I'm in Christ. And if I'm full of bitterness and resentment and hatred and anger, that's not in Christ. You may get an anointing. Guaranteed, honey, you will. If you want a feeling, you'll get it. And that's a trouble. We're governed by our feelings and our emotions. Not too many led by the Spirit. Gun meddling? Okay. 2 Corinthians 2, 14. Now, I want every one of you to write this about 10,000 times. <laughs> put it on your refrigerator. Put it on the mirror. Put it all over the place. You're laughing now, but you haven't read it yet. <laughs> See? Now, let's read it. No thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph where? In Christ. We gotta write that 10,000 times. He causes us to triumph. Not once in 
a while. Amen. But a continual place of victory. Come on, I'll challenge you tonight. And when I read that scripture verse, that blew my mind. And I told the prayer group, we're through. I couldn't have that. <laughs> and how many of you tonight just flipped right over it? Amen? Amen? But you let that begin to burn into your very inner recesses of your spiritual being. How to, then we're going to have, begin to have an overcoming life because he causes us. And neighbor, you rebel every time God causes you to do something. <coughs> Amen? Sometimes God's got to take you by the nap of the neck and drag you around and cause you to do things. Amen? But when the devil did it, say, you never left a drag mark on your pathway. You helped him. But I'll tell you, that one scripture verse has meant very, very much to me. Now, thanks be unto God. Amen? Amen. 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 Now thanks be unto God, I have found my final resting place. No more hassles. No more none of this. For he's causing me. He's causing me. He's causing me to triumph in Christ. Amen. Amen. So now I can say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Thanks now be unto God. I found a place of victory. And I thought we were supposed to be victors. I thought we were supposed to be overcomers. Oh, Brother Beasley, if you knew my wife, if you knew my husband, if you knew my children, if you knew my job, and here we go. Well, every one of us here got a broken record tonight. <laughs> Amen. You know, that's why we don't have a triumphant life. That's why we don't have a victorious life. When, when we get that way, don't tell me you're triumphant. You're defeated. Don't tell me you're in Christ. Brother Beast, that's a strong word. Uh-huh, where the word of the king is. Come on, honey, you said it, I didn't. I didn't even know that was in the book. But I'm going to, I'm going to use it. Hey, Amen. For the word says, now thanks be unto God, because he causes me, 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 well it be easily, to triumph in Jesus Christ. I make these scripture verses personal. They're my neighbor. Jesus is causing Willard to triumph. You hear me? And God is causing Willard to get sanctified. <laughs> Amen. Well, maybe if some of you were more honest, you'd feel like, hey, honey, I feel good. Oh, I don't know. Jesus. I could work this place over all night. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Hang in there. All right. So he causes us to triumph in Christ and maketh manifest the Savior of his knowledge by us in certain circumstances. Huh? Oh, no, it don't. It's just certain circumstances. That's the way we live. Now, come on, that's the way we live. But in every circumstance, every place, every yeah. condition, every environment, every wife, every husband, every child, every job, every school, every fellowship, every bit of the neighbor in God tonight will triumph. That's what the word says. And I believe the word tonight. And if ever the body of Jesus Christ needs a triumphant tread, it's now. And it's not singing a Jericho march. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a lived life lived within our very being. And the worst enemy you got, neighbor, is not your husband, your wife, or your child. It's plain little old you. 
That's the one that caused the biggest trouble. You pray for revival and the move of God, and every time you open up that door, you fall over yourself. <laughs> Amen. It's you that causes the trouble. Yeah. It's you that hates. It's you that's jealous. It's you that backbiting tail bear. It's you. It's not him. Come on now. And if I'm in him, them dark things ain't supposed to be there. Amen? Amen? So therefore, if they're there, I'm not quite, let's say, I'm not quite sanctified. Well, you know, Brother Beasy, we've got to have expression. That's the trouble with us. We've got expressions, but we don't have his. All right? Now, how about three? I read that, 314. Now, 517. And we've always taken this scripture verse for, for salvation. It says, therefore, if any man be what? Does that say just for salvation? Does it? It means in every situation, every circumstance, every circumstance. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. And then why do so many of us hold on the old paths, the old things, the old memories, the old habits, the old customs? Come on. I thought when I said yes to God, I became a new creature. That means I'm no longer identified with the past. You hear me? I'm no longer identified with those memories. Come on. I dare to say amen. amen. No longer identified with the fears of yesterday. No longer identified with the sins of the past. I changed my identity. I'm identified with Christ. I have a new personality, a new life, a new outlook. I'm a new person, a new creature, because I'm identified with him. And the things of the past no longer should be identified with my life. And people talk about memories, memories, memories. You remember the rotten memories. You don't remember the good ones. Don't you say amen, I'll say amen, fire. <laughs> Verse 19. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciled the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Because of God. And if ever the body needs restoration and reconciliation, it's now. Reconciliation, is that right? We've, we're identified with somebody. You hear me? We're identified with somebody. And when you get all strung out, you're not showing the world Jesus. Okay? Relax, everybody. I got you. I'm going to keep it for a little while. Let's go flying now. 2 4, Galatians 2 4. And that because of false brethren, unawares brought in, who came in privately to spite our liberty, which we what? The liberty we have in Christ Jesus that they might bring us into bondage and neighbor. The devil is sending spies into every Bible school and into every church where there's a move of God. And he's spying out the land and he's trying to destroy the liberty that God gave us. And if we don't watch out, we're brought into bondage. Amen. Oh foolish Galatians who have bewitched you. 
You want to do some study? Study the word bewitched. Oh, I don't like that sound. <clears throat> well, I, there's a lot of sounds that I don't like, but there's a lot of things I have to do, even if I don't like it. And the devil is sending out false prophets and sending out spies to pervert the way of the Lord and rob you of the liberty of God in our hearts and in our lives. And if ever the body of Jesus Christ needs instruction and direction, because I'll tell you, we're not to accept every sensation. <clears throat> Amen? And we're not to accept every prophecy. And we're not ex to, supposed to accept every word. It may sound good, and it may make me feel good. But neighbor, I'd rather have God roll up his sleeves and thump on me so that I'd get right instead of give me goosebumps and walk home completely discouraged. That's what I want. I want the dealings. Don't worry about the blessings. You get the dealings done. You won't have to pray, bless me, honey. You'll get it. And we spend too much time asking God to bless us. How can he bless us if I'm not in Christ? Amen? Can you hear me? And that's why some of our prayers aren't answered because we're not in Christ. That's why sometimes our prayer, our, our, our faith doesn't turn in the hand of God. Because we're not in him. Aren't those words beautiful in Christ? Hey, did you know that kind of heavy, isn't it? Amen. Amen. All right, Galatians 3, 26. For ye are all the children of God by faith where? And I'm only a child of God when I'm in him. <coughs> Now, I know there's going to be a lot of theological expressions a, a, a lot of gears grinding in your minds and I'm not here for theological reasonings or grind gears or, or chopping an axe. I'm sharing with you what the Lord has been dealing in my heart and in my life. I'm beginning to see the true potential and power when I grasp that name. Like that brother said, grab a hold of it, honey. And when you do, don't let go. You get a ride like you never had in all your life. You hear me? And you fly high, wide, and handsome. And you know you've been somewhere when it begins to become virtuous life imparted into your very being. Amen? Okay, 517 of Galatians. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to the other. Oh, I'm reading the wrong one. 5-6. For in Jesus Christ, there is neither circumcision, availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith worketh by love and neighbor. I cannot love you if I'm not in Christ. I cannot love you if I'm not in Christ. I love the lovely. I love those that will be nice to me. I love those that will be good to me. Come on. Why don't you say amen? Yes. Amen. amen. But outside of Christ, I cannot love. Because it will take the love, the agape love of Christ in my life that I may show forth the love and give a love and want nothing in return. That's the kind of the love that the body of Jesus Christ should have. Hallelujah. Not what we can do for each other or what we can exchange. Oh no. Give and give. Spend and be spent. And don't even ask 
for a thank you. But we'll be nice if you say thank me, thank you. We'll be good if somebody pats us on the back, gives us a position. Hey, hey, don't you know who I am, you lucky people? <laughs> but the agape love of Jesus Christ will never make you feel used or abused. Come on now. The agape love of Jesus Christ, and you'll never feel used and abused. But all you want to do is just give and give and give. And you know what? And be happy in it. Anybody hear me tonight? Amen. Or do you want me to get you to laugh for a minute? That's the kind of love I want. Okay, the 19th verse. Oh, I've got some of these all mixed up. Galatians 6, 15. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. And when you try to make somebody walk like you, talk like you, and live like you, you're bringing him under the law. You hear me? You are bringing that person under the law. God wants you to be you. When I walked the streets, I lived in hell. I looked for trouble. I made trouble. I defied trouble. And when he came in, he just turned that challenge around. That's all he done. And I appreciate that. Because I live for a challenge. When people says it can't be done, something inside, inside says all things are possible. When people says there's no hope, he says now's my turn. When you're rejected and dejected and pull the bottom of the barrel out and kept digging down and digging down and you felt absolutely helpless and hopeless, God says, now I can do something. Amen. Don't say it too loud, though. All right? Ephesians 1.3. Now mark this one down, please. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all, get it? All spiritual blessings in heavenly places, period. Oh, I'm sorry. The condition is where? That's it. And every verse that I've shared with you tonight is conditional. You hear me? And a lot of people say, well, Lord, don't you know where I am? Don't you know who I am? Here I am, Lord. And here we sit. Lord, you know all about it. And here we say, come on, say amen. amen. And God will pass you by. Because I've got to do something to get into that in relationship with Christ. And I can sit and rock till eternity ceases to exist. But unless I get into that place of me getting into that in relationship with Christ, I'll never have spiritual blessings. And that's why, neighbor, we get blessings once in a while. Come on now. Once in a while, we walk in the heavenlies. Come on now. You know why? Because we're only in Christ once in a while. But I believe, and I feel by just a few, hey, I've got all this. 
<laughs> by just a few that I've got you strung out with. And I went down the whole list, and I, I, I'm going to have plenty more. I'm not going to show them tonight, so hang in there, honey, relax. <laughs> but just through these few that I've shared with you, God dealt with me for almost three weeks before I could carry on and teach my prayer group. I refuse to go on if I cannot face the reality of the instruction and the strictness of God in my If I can't take it, how can I minister to you? How can I tell you to walk unless I've walked in it? Amen? Amen. And I stopped and God dealt with me on all these verses so I was able to share it with my prayer group. I want those spiritual blessings. I want them. I want these heavenly expressions. Not just once in a while. Constantly. Just to flow with that intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. So, in closing. I love every one of you. I mean that. When I see so many people going through needless problems, if they could only begin to see the potential of appropriating that in relationship. A lot of you people are bugged by a lot of needless things. You hear me? A lot of you are bugged by needless things. Yeah. Needless. Amen. Some people need a two-inch bell. <coughs> right? Some of you need to be shaken. Yes. Some of you are looking for attention. Some people do your thing so you can get attention. And take first place. And make a show. Watch out, he'll get you. Either that, or he'll pass you by. I'm dead serious, folks, dead honest. I say what I mean, and I mean what I say. I won't do anything, and I try to tell it like it is. There's potential in these verses that I shared with you tonight because it's beginning to do a thing in my life, and God has used me mightily in the ministry of deliverance, but I can see he can use me mightier when I begin to make these become flesh of my flesh and bone of my bone. Amen. 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 We played the game. I don't want to play the game. I want to live in the reality of the traumatic power of the name of Jesus. And when that old damnable devil begins to breathe down my neck, I'll be able to say, in the name of Jesus, I curse your power. Some of you got shook up just with that phrase. <laughs> Amen. And I could just walk right around and thump on your roof tonight. But I'm going to be nice to you. Those, you all know I've been here all week. If some of you, if you really wanted help, you could find me. I've sought some of you out, haven't I? <laughs> Caught you going by the door. But you know what? If you want help, you'll seek for it. If not, you're going to go around in that maze, in that merry-go-round, living a shallow, barren, Amen. empty life. So if I could just put my arms around you, give you all a hug and a kiss, because I love you. You all don't know what Pine Chris really means to me. I'm so glad to get back. <coughs> When I travel around the country, if I could just have this spirit wherever I go. If I could just have this fellowship on the mountains of Haiti. Just take this worship and praise and just let it come down over those bound villages and let them begin to feel 
the vibration of the anointing of the Holy Ghost, the battle would be so much easier. But when you've got to do it all, it's hard. 8,000 feet up in the air, you could almost take those stars out of that sky and pull them down. Way above the clouds. And in that heathen land, be able to know that the God that I presented to you, to neighbor, I'm no different than Haiti that I'm right here. Two interpreters to keep up with me while I'm preaching the word. That's right. Oh, I love them tonight. I'm beginning to realize there's a new dimension, a new realm of expression just in his name, through his name. Oh, I'll tell you there's some searching of the word, some teaching just in him, through him, about that name. I love it. God bless you all real good. Brother